Hello everyone, this is Dr. Celeste Owens. Welcome to this webinar, which is entitled The Three Behaviors That Hinder Fasting Success. I'm just so overjoyed that you all have decided to join me tonight uh, for a topic that's not that popular all the time, fasting. Most people don't want to talk about fasting, nor do they want to do it, but you have decided to join me, so I'm very excited about that. Uh, just going through, uh, we'll go through a couple of housekeeping things first. First of all, uh, I'm a big fan of social media. I think it's a great way to relay information, pass information on to people. So if you can, throughout the session, if you would please post your comments using the hashtag uh, pound fasting success or that hashtag symbol, that number symbol, fasting success, it would be great because what's helpful about that is that I can go back later and look at your comments. If I click, um, put in the hashtag fasting success, I can look at, your look at your comments and then all of us can look at each other's comments and, you know, be encouraged by them and just learn some new information. And then also, if you want to go ahead and post on Facebook and Twitter, let everyone know, your friends and your family know that you're on the webinar, fasting success webinar. Let them know that it is live and they can join us. And also remember to put in the hashtag fasting success, fasting success, and that'll help me keep track of you and your comments. So here's how you can participate. Uh, there's an arrow at the top where you see, you might notice that orange arrow, and I have it there right on the screen. If you click that arrow, that will expand and collapse your console, because sometimes you lose that and you kind of think that you're off the call. Um, so you can make sure you click that if you lose your screen. And also, I would love to interact with you. You all are all on mute, of course, but you certainly are welcome to put in questions in the questions box. And I would, again, love to interact with you throughout the session. So anytime you have a question, you could put it there, and I'll take um, most of the questions at the end, but I might take a few in between as well, too. Um, so thank you in that vein. Uh, just a few more housekeeping things, and then I promise we're going to get right to it. Uh, this session is being recorded. I've already clicked record, and we've been recording for the last couple of minutes. And the recording will be available within 24 hours. Uh, so um, if you want to re-listen, you can. And then I know there's some other people who I need to send a recording to anyway. So that recording will be available. And then this session is from 7 to 7.30. And then if you want to stay on the line with me and ask questions, I'm happy to stay on as long as you like um, to answer questions about fasting. I'm Dr. Celeste Owens, just in case you haven't heard. And I'm the co-founder of Dr. Celeste Owens Ministries. I co-founded it with my husband and Dell. And I'm a psychologist by trade. I no longer practice, but... I went to school for a very long time to not be a psychologist now, and you know, want to know why? Because God asked me, told me to stop doing it, and I was obedient to do what I do now, and I'm happy that I made that change because it has pushed me um, in the direction that God wants me to be in. I'm also a certified natural health professional, which means that I look for ways to help people be well naturally, and I talk about that part of my um, career, I guess you could say, on my website. So if you go to surrenderfast.com and click natural health, then you'll learn more about some of the stuff I do related to natural health. I'm a lifelong faster, you all. I have been fasting nonstop pretty much since 2010. Now, nonstop doesn't mean I fast 365 days a year. God's not calling anyone to do that. But I probably fast more during the year than I am not fasting, if that makes sense. So probably 60% of the year I'm fasting. And it's just the season I'm in uh, and what God has had me to do. Um, I did my first fast in, well, let me say, I've been fasting since I was little. I've been fasting since I was probably like six or seven years old when my parents joined the um, Kojic Church of God in Christ, uh, Sanctified, all those names that Pentecostal, whatever you want to call it, when they joined that church when I was six years old. So I've been fasting since I was little. I pretty much fasted improperly up until 2010. Uh, and we're going to talk about those hindrances. These, these are some things that I have learned in the last three years of how not to fast. So I want to help you, especially if you're a first-time faster. If, this, if, this, if you're thinking about fasting or you're not um, new to fasting, 
go into the um, questions or even the chat box, I don't care either way, and let me know because I just want to know who's new to fasting because you can be a veteran faster in no time flat when you um, are fasting properly. So I'm just curious to know who's um, new to fasting. And anyway, I'm the author of the 40 Day Surrender Fast. And guess what? It's a book on fasting. Yes, it is. <laughs> um, Latoya, hi Latoya, is new to fasting. And Keisha Lewis, hey Keisha. Keisha's my mentor, you all. Check her out. Keisha Rocks. Uh, she's new to fasting as well. Um, let me see who else. Uh, oh, Latoya told me twice. Oh, no, La Latoya's telling me hi. Hi, Latoya. <laughs> Great to make your acquaintance. And so glad that you have decided to uh, be a part of this conversation with us. Um, so again, uh, I'm the author of the 40 Day Surrender Fast, and you can check the Surrender Fast out at SurrenderFast.com. Uh, again, I'm not going to be with you for long. We're going to go to about 7.30 or so, and then I'm going to open up for questions. Um, so what is fasting? And I sent a handout, but I only sent it about an hour before this session, so you may or may not have gotten it. But if you have the handout, you're welcome to go through um, um, and fill in these the answers to these questions. So the first question on your handout, what it, it was, what is fasting? Um, and fasting is, and before I even tell you what fasting is, which you already see there, I just want to acknowledge um, Dietra. She said she's not new to fasting. And, uh, and then also Emily said she used to fast regularly but fell off from doing it and have not been able to get back to effectively um, doing it or, or um, looks like to have the desire to do it. So awesome. Um, thank you so much for commenting, you all. So what is fasting? Fasting is to temporarily give up something in order to draw closer to God. It's that simple, you all. To fast is to give up something. And in order to draw closer to God, and it's to give up something that, um, first of all, that God is instructing you to give up, um, but secondly, something that is a sacrifice. Like my son, um, ever since I've done a surrender fast, each time we've done the fast, he's told me that he's going to give up school. No, that doesn't count. You know, that, that, there's no suffering in that for him, at least not in the short term. Later on, he will regret it, but not in the short term. So um, you temporarily give up something in order to draw closer to God. Um, and it's to purposefully and voluntarily abstain from a pleasurable activity. So it could be food, but it also could be something else. Because as we see here in scripture, fasting is almost always linked to sustaining, abstaining from food. But it certainly can be something else. And again, you give it up um, in the effort to draw closer to God. And it's purposefully and it's voluntarily. So, and what what I mean by that is... You don't fast out of convenience. Like I remember I was hanging out with one of my friends. This was way in the 90s. Um, he um, forgot to eat breakfast. No, no, it was worse than that. He ate breakfast. And right after he finished breakfast, he said, okay, I'm going to fast now. I'm like, mm-mm, it doesn't work that way. You're supposed to start in the beginning, you know, in the morning. <laughs> so he, he wanted to start fasting after he ate. Um, and then the other day I was talking with my friend Daph, and this was just purely a joke, but it had started snowing and she didn't run out in time to get groceries. And she was like, well, I guess I'm fasting today. <laughs> we were cracking up, but of course that's not the way it works. It's something that you do on purpose and you do it voluntarily. So next question is, what is the purpose of fasting? What is the purpose of fasting? Um, what do you all think the purpose of fasting is? You can go ahead and chime in in the questions box if you want to, if you have an idea. What is the purpose of fasting? Okay, let's see what we have here. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's a trick question. I just want to see if you all were paying attention. Latoya says to draw closer to God. Sherelle says to draw closer to God. Keisha says to focus. Emily says clarity and direction, strategy and warfare. Very good. Um, like you said, to get closer to God, absolutely. The purpose of fasting is to draw closer to God. And all of these other things that you all are mentioning, like Keisha said, focus, clarity, direction, Emily said, those things happen when you draw closer to God and you get to hear what God wants to say to you. Tina says to hear from God without um, distractions. Love that, Tina. Um, LaVon says to hear God better. Deidre says to get clarity from God. Roxanne, hey, Roxanne. 
She said, for breakthroughs, yes, 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 we're going to talk about all this tonight. Shara said, hey, Shara, to deny the distractions of the flesh to hear from God. Ooh, that flesh, I'm telling you, is just like wants to take over. And the flesh always tells you, you, you shouldn't be fasting right now. No, you don't want to do that. And when you are fasting, the flesh makes you think every single food just looks so delicious. It doesn't matter if it was broccoli or what. It just looks so good. And Tanya uh, says, to develop a closer relationship to God, rid yourself of those things that hinder you. Lisa says, um, all of these are awesome. Um, Lisa says, to release the natural and get into the spiritual. And then Leslie, hey Leslie, um, says, to draw your spirit man to be in control. Absolutely, you all. Love it. You all, some... It sounds like some of you have been fasting, yes, or so, or at least you know of fasting, so that is fantastic. Um, all of those answers are correct, but of course the number one answer, the purpose of fasting is to draw closer to God. What is the purpose of, oh, to focus on and draw closer to God. There we go. We have the answer right there. Um, and you, you know, of course, while you're fasting, you should certainly be praying and meditating on his word during that time as well. Not thinking about your next meal. Like, oh man, what time is it? Oh, it's so hard not to do that, you all. I'm telling you, I fast now and I still, if I'm fasting from food, I'm like, come on, three o'clock, come on, whatever time I'm fasting to, come on, two o'clock, whatever it is. It's like, stop it. Focus on God. Read the Bible. Um, uh, Tanya said, Tanya, my long time friend, um, says, when you are yearning for a closer relationship to God, um, you fast and to show God that he is more important and worth the sacrifice. Yes, Tanya and everyone else, to show God he's worth the sacrifice. God has so much that he wants to share with you, that he wants to give you because he has this awesome plan for you. But oftentimes we miss that because of the flesh and because we neglect to do um, what he is calling us to do. And fasting is one of those lost disciplines that I want to encourage you all to do. What are the benefits of fasting? Everybody always wants to know what is it, what's in it for me, even when it comes to fasting. What's in it for me? The benefits of true fasting, true fasting is talked about in Isaiah 58. One of the benefits, and I think Roxanne just said this earlier about breaking um, strongholds. Um, absolutely. It talks about that in Isaiah 56. I mean, 58 in verse 6, and it says, um, Is not this the kind of fasting I have chosen to loose the chains of injustice and to untie the cords of the yoke and to set the oppressed free and break every yoke, to break every chain, to break every yoke? I'm going to pause right here because as I was thinking about chains being broken, I know God is going to break some chains. We're not fasting right now, but God is just in the midst of us, and I just want to stop um, and pray and, and ask God to continue to be among with us during this conversation. Dear Heavenly Father, I just thank you, God, for this time. Thank you, God, for those who have um, decided to join um, me tonight to talk about the benefits of fasting and the things that hinder us from having an effective fast. Oh, God, I just um, ask that you forgive me for not praying from the start, but I know that you are with us. And you hear us, oh God, and you are speaking to hearts even right now, oh God. So I just pray, oh God, that your truth goes out and that it falls on fertile ground and that we make the changes that we need to, Lord, to do your will. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So also another benefit of fasting, again, found in Isaiah 58, is a closer walk with God. This world, I mean, I, I don't know if anybody's noticed, but there's just like a lot going on and um. And if you watch enough of the news, read enough of the Internet, things on the Internet, all sorts of things, we realize that there is so much evil in the world. So we want to be closer to God. So we certainly want to make time to fast and be closer to God. I know many of you probably will be fasting for the new year. And um, I hope that you can take some of the things that you're learning tonight so that you can fast in an effective way uh, for the new year or whenever you decide to fast this year. Um, also, when you fast, you have heightened discernment. I'm telling you all, when I'm in um, in the mode or when I'm in a fast, in the middle of a fast, I can literally think of somebody's name and the phone rings and it's them. And it, it blows me away. I'm like, oh, my goodness, where would that come from? Wow. But, you know, it's just that your spirit man is heightened. You, you have reduced the flesh to the point where it's not in control and the spirit is in control. And the spirit is, um, God is a spirit and we're connected to him through spirit. Um, and you just become, 
um, you have heightened discernment. So that's what happens. That's in verse 11. It talks about that. And then also restoration. One of the benefits, again, of fasting is restoration. Um, I don't know about you, but there's some things that I need restored. I know there's some things that are in the short term that we need restored, but there are also things that we need restored in um, the longer term, things that are gen have been generational, who that have just ravaged some of our families, um, abuse, sexual abuse, um, physical abuse, emotional abuse, um, alcoholism, drug addiction. I was just talking to a sister earlier today whose daughter is struggling with that. She uh, is has been clean for many years, but now her daughter is on drugs. And it's just that kind of generational patterns that God can break, um, certainly through our prayer and fasting time. So now we get to the different types of fast. So there are four types of fast. Most if any of you have are veteran fasters, you're probably going to think there are three types of fast, but really there are four types, and we're going to talk about those now. The first fast is a normal fast, and that's when you abstain from all forms of food, but you drink water. So that's a normal fast, and it's talked about in Luke 4, 1 through 2. Um, and again, you abstain from all forms of food, but you drink water. Then there's an absolute fast. So normal fast, my husband and I, and Dell, we fast every week together. And we've actually been doing that since we were engaged. God just placed it on our hearts to fast, and we started fasting throughout our engagement. We were engaged over a year. We fasted together. I know that that sacrifice, as Tanya was talking about being a sacrifice to God, I know that that sacrifice helped to form the strong foundation that we have now. When we fast together on, on Tuesdays, we fast. And Dell does a normal fast because he still drinks water or whatever else he might drink. I do an absolute fast where I abstain from everything. I don't, I don't drink, I don't eat. Um, and probably because um, the church I grew up in, we always did absolute fast. So I'm just, I'm just used to doing an absolute fast. I actually feel guilty if I drink something while I fast. So, but that's not to say you don't have to because there are normal fasts where you can drink. Um, there is also a partial fast, and that's where foods are restricted. So sometimes when people fast, they'll do the Daniel fast, where they restrict certain foods. And in the Daniel fast, if you're unfamiliar with it, it's when you eat um, whole foods. You eat uh, foods that are um, um, unrefined. They are natural. I'm trying to think of other words. I'll just tell you the types of foods you will eat. You will eat um, no meat, but you'll do grains and um um, vegetables and all sorts of things like that. If you ever look it up, there's tons of websites on the Daniel Fast, but that's when you restrict foods so you won't eat sugars, you won't eat all sorts of things like that. That's the Daniel Fast. Lastly, there is the Surrender Fast. Hello, there's a Surrender Fast, and that's when you abstain from doing whatever shares part of your heart with God. You surrender that thing to God that shares part of your heart with Him. And what's interesting about the Surrender Fast and what God shared with me, and people have surrendered all sorts of things, you all when they do the surrender fast. It, you know, it goes from fasting like the normal absolute fast, but then some people do a partial fast where they give up certain things like sugar, um, meats, things like that. Then people give up other things like um, pornography, alcohol, cigarettes, internet, you name it. I mean, seconds. Somebody give up seconds. I love seconds. I love to get a plate of food. I, I love to make a plate of food smaller so I can get seconds. Someone gave up seconds. Um, Leslie, who was on the call, gave up her favorite smoothie. People have given up all sorts of things um, and surrendered it to God. And what I learned about the surrender fast um, is that when you surrender something through the surrender fast, you're either surrendering something that is an idol and God is asking you to surrender it, and that's why it hurts so bad when you have to surrender it, or you're surrendering something to God to prove it's not an idol. And you know what remi that reminds me of is when Abraham was told to um, sacrifice Isaac, and he wasn't fasting as far as I know, but... He proved to God that Isaac was not an idol. I love that. So that's what the surrender fast is all about. So those are the four types of fast. Um, hindrance number one. Hindrance number one is making something more um, than God the focus. So when you're fasting, and I can't tell you how many times people have um, decided or to, told me that they were fasting because they wanted to get these things. Like, I want to lose weight. I'm fasting because I want to lose weight. I want to get some more money or I want to get a new house or I don't want my house to go to foreclosure. That's why I'm fasting. That's a hindrance because then you make the focus something else. You just want to fast the way God is instructing you to fast and you want to do 
um, the task he's calling you to do, and then you want to make him the focus. And then anything else he wants to do on top of that is, it, you know, he does it. It's his will, and it's fine. But you don't want to make these things the focus of your fast. And um, I remember even when I did my first 40-day um, fast in 2010, I did um, what is known as a Daniel fast. I did it for 40 days. And I lost 16 pounds. So when I got done, I was telling people, oh, you know, I did this fast. And, you know, I was fasting for 40 days. And people, how much weight did you lose? And I was so glad to tell them, I lost 16 pounds. Oh, my goodness, this is great. But then I realized, wow, that's making the fast about weight. You didn't say anything about you grew closer to God and he revealed all these things to you. And so we want to make sure we don't make um, the focus any other thing than God. And I remember Lisa, Lisa's on the call. She, I don't remember what Lisa surrendered, but she surrendered something else. But she kept getting all these financial blessings. And it's funny because Lisa put up a testimony and she was like, man, I hate to sound like I'm shallow, but every time I do this fast, I keep getting blessed financially. That's what God wanted to do for Lisa. So he was, he was more than happy to do it because she was fasting in the right way. If you have any questions, you feel free to pop them in now if you want. Um... Let's see. Latoya says, I taught for a long time that you fast so that you can achieve things like new home job, etc. Okay, gotcha. And Lisa says, yes, she agrees. Um, yeah, you know, a lot of people say, you know, they will say, you You know what, that's interesting, Latoya. Um, and I want to think about a thoughtful way to answer that. Because, okay, this is the way I can answer that. Because actually, when Endel and I fast on Tuesdays, we put things before God. And what I mean by that is we list the things that we want to uh, put before God, not that we want to focus on while we're fasting, because we want to focus on God, but the things that we want to put before the Lord while we're fasting. So this year, we've pretty much the entire year, we've put marriages before God. We want to pray for marriages, so we put that before God. We've um, put other things, um, his job at one point, he was unemployed this year, um, the surrender fast, we put that before God. We put them before God, but we leave them with God, and we fast to focus on God. I hope that makes sense. I hope I answer your question, Latoya, or your comment. So um, here's another question. Let's see. Um, Myrtle says, isn't it true that you shouldn't do a total fast unless you prepare your body for it? Um, yes, Myrtle. And anytime you go to fast, do any kind of food fast, you should check with your doctor first anyway to see if that's something that your body can tolerate because sometimes you are not um, healthy enough to fast. So, and if you're doing, a full, I'm going to talk about this in a minute, about total fast. I'll, Myrtle, I'm going to get back to that because I'm going to talk about that in a sec. Um, and then Carolyn says, I think that comes from the idea that something only comes through prayer and fasting. Thank you, Carolyn. Right, we do get the idea that we have to focus on something else during fasting because it says some things only come through prayer and fasting, which is true. So that's why we put things before the Lord we focus on him during the fast. Um, thanks, Latoya. She said to answer a question. Um, Elaine says, do you think that sometimes God does not necessarily give you what you might be seeking through fasting because the focus is not on him, but on what the thing that you want? Yep, Elaine, that's exactly what we're talking about tonight. We have two more hindrances to go through, but this is the first one. You're, you're not doing the fast like it talks about in Isaiah 58. The fast that I've called you to he hasn't called us to focus on money while we're supposedly fasting to get closer to him. So absolutely. And then we get done with the fast. We're, we're all mad at God. Ugh, God didn't answer what I wanted to do. And I went starving or I surrendered something I didn't want to surrender. It's because your heart isn't right. Your heart was not right. And you didn't get the, um, the things that you thought you should get from God. Uh, again, because you weren't fasting in the right way. Carla says she's never fasted. However, I did participate in the last surrender fast. I've always wanted to fast, um, but, do, but don't know how. Amen, Carla. So now you're going to know a few things to do tonight that hinder us from fasting properly. Um, so the first hindrance, again, is making something other than God the focus. Okay, you all I know I'm breaking the rules. I just said I was going to answer questions afterwards, but it's just so, so much more interesting to answer it in the moment. So anyway, so the next hindrance is, there we go, neglecting to do the fast God is calling you to. I can't say that enough. Do the fast that God is calling you to do. I remember I was um, somewhere, um, oh, I was over at my church. I go to the First Baptist Church of Glenarda, and when I went in, there was a woman there, and she's like, oh, I heard about your fast, but she's like, I don't want to do it because 
um, everybody else is doing it. I don't like to do things that are sad. I want to know if God's telling me to do it. I agree with her. Don't do everything because everybody else is doing it. Do only what God is calling you to do. And um, I've had to be in tune with God to know what things he wanted me to fast from. So this year, these are just some of the fasts I did this year. Um, one is to surrender fast, obviously. I lead the surrender fast. We do cycles of fasting um, across the nation. We host fast. Our next fast cycle is cycle seven. You can check it out. Um, it starts March 10th, I think. I might be wrong. But if you go to surrenderfast.com, you can check it out. But anyway, done a surrender fast this year. Obviously, God called me to the surrender fast because I had to lead it. So, yeah. Daniel fast. Um, I did. Okay. It gets a little confusing. When I was doing surrender fast in January, I did Daniel fast because I became vegan. So I did a Daniel fast in the same time I was doing a surrender fast. And I surrendered my finances, but also surrendered my diet. Yeah, it, it might get a little complicated sounding. But anyway, I did all of that. Um, but then after I finished the surrender fast, um, I felt God was leading me to a three-day absolute. So this is where Myrtle comes in with don't your body needs to be healthy and well to do this. Yeah, after I did that Daniel or vegan fast for 40 days, I felt God was calling me to a three-day absolute. Um, it is said that you should not go without um, food and water for more water. I'm sorry for more than three days, but I did an absolute for three days um, just because I knew God was calling me to it. And you know the ways you know God is calling you to, to things is through His Word. When you pray, God will speak to your heart, and He also sends confirmation through other people. Um, license plates. People have said they've seen things on license plates they, that God has confirmed things. I know my friend Carolyn, who's on the call, um, when she was supposedly her Queen Esther ministry, she saw a license plate that said. Queen Esther or something. I might be getting that wrong, but something like that happened. So God speaks to us in all sorts of ways. I also did a 21-day detox this year. I did the Martha Vineyard detox diet. Um, I knew God was calling me to 21 days. It took me like a week or two to know what fast I was supposed to do. So it wasn't like, first of all, I didn't want to do a 21-day detox. Let's start there. So I really didn't want to hear God. But this actually, once I knew he was talking to me, I'm like, okay, God, what fast do I have to do? And he just called me to that Martha Vineyard, um, and I don't have enough time to get into how he specifically did that, but I knew it was him, that he, he that he called me to that fast. And then earlier this year, I did a 21-day financial fast when we were doing surrender fast. I surrendered my finances, um, and God was calling us to a financial fast. And the beauty of that financial fast is that I we didn't know that Andel's contract was going to end on his job, and he would be unemployed for four months. So during the financial fast, we like penny pinched and only bought necessities and just, um, you know, all that sort of thing. It had really built up even more of a nest egg than we emergency fund we had before. And it helped us to get through that season of famine. So um, I just thank God because he leads us to do things because it's good for us not to necessarily punish us or anything like that. Um, and Cara said, how can you be sure of what God is telling you to fast about? Car, just like I was saying that you will know um, what he's telling you because it just drops in your spirit and he starts to confirm that thing about what you're supposed to do. Like some of you tonight are here, you're supposed to do the surrender fast through this conversation. He'll just, he, I mean, he just set you up. You're on a fasting, you're on a fasting uh, webinar. I mean, you'll just know. And I, like I said, it comes through confirmation through other people for me as well. Um, Tyus says... What if you are fasting out of obedience with a group versus, I'm going to get to that, Tanya. That is a great question. Um, Nick, Coach Nick, hey, Coach Nick, she says, when I saw your book, Surrender Fast, I knew what God was calling me to do. The Surrender Fast gave me a blueprint to allow me to face my fears. Right? Sometimes people will just look at the cover of the book and be like, oh, surrender. I know God's already calling me to that. You just know. Um, oh, Carolyn saw Esther on the name, on the um, license plate. Thanks, Carolyn. She saw the word Esther. and She knew that's what she's supposed to do. Um, and Myrtle says she's done a financial fast through Prosperity Partners, and she's glad she did it. Yeah, you know what? And there's another fantastic financial fast. Um, Michelle Singletary wrote a book called The 21-Day Fast, 21-Day Financial Fast, something. 21 Days to Prosper, that's it. 21 Days to Prosper is a great book. So if you want to do a financial fast, you certainly could do 21 Days to Prosper. Again, the 21-day detox that I did as a fast was the Martha Vineyard's Detox Diet. Okay, so last um, hindrance, number three, making your time of fasting a religious formality. Tanya, that's what Tanya was just saying. She's like, then how do you fast properly if you're fasting with a group? So say, for example, your church says, for the new year, we're all fasting. 
And you're like, no, I don't feel like fasting. Is that a formality? It's actually only a formality if you only do it because the church called you to do it. Now, first of all, you should do it because the church called you to do it because that's obedience. And God rewards obedience. But you also now, because of what you're hearing tonight and what you know about fasting now, you should say, God, I didn't necessarily pick this fast, but I did pick this church and I did pick this pastor. And this pastor is calling us to do X fast. He's calling us to do this fast. So I want to do it with all my might. So, Lord, I want to turn my heart over to you and I want to fast in a way that helps me to focus on you and draw closer to you in the way our church is calling us to fast. And that's the way you do it. But you don't want to do it as, oh, this is like, it, for example, in my church growing up, we always fat, we fasted on Tuesdays and Fridays. Um, so you skip um, breakfast and lunch and you, and you ate dinner. Tuesdays and Fridays. I did it religiously. Seriously, I did it religiously. And I saw no fruit from that fasting because I only did it because they told me to. <laughs> no one told me, or at least I didn't hear them say, you know, draw closer to God, you know, focus on him. I was focusing on my food. I would have my plate ready before it was 3 o'clock. Like, come on now, I'm hungry. When is 3 o'clock coming? <laughs> and I know some of you have done it too. But you don't want to make it a religious formality. You really want to make it a time-honoring um, place that you are in with God. So let's see what we have here. Um, Cheryl says, I heard that, that we should not share with others that we are fasting. Cheryl you are all up in my notes, or Sherelle. I might be saying your name wrong, I'm sorry. But I, it's so funny that you would say that because this is my take on it. When you're fasting, when you're doing a regular, regular old fast, that people say, you know, you're fasting from food or whatever, the regular, absolute, or partial, um, all those fasting from food. I don't think you should tell people you're fasting. I don't tell people I'm fasting. Like, well, now you know I fast on Tuesdays because I'm doing this webinar. But when I'm fasting on Tuesdays, if someone says, you want to go out to lunch, I'll just say no. I won't say, oh, I'm fasting. I will say no. But the surrender fast is different because I always ask people, what are you surrendering? What are you surrendering? Because when you're doing a food fast, when you say to people, oh, I'm so hungry because I'm fasting, that's about pride. And that's why God said, don't tell people you're fasting. Don't look all hungry. You know, stop telling people you're fasting. But surrender fast, when you tell people what you're surrendering, that's about humility. Because no one wants to say, I'm surrendering pornography. No one wants to say, I'm surrendering my pride. Or I'm surrendering, um, one person had to surrender cashews because she would inhale, I mean pistachios, because she would inhale a whole bag of pistachios in like a half hour. No one wants to say that. So when you are on a surrender fast, it's almost like you should tell somebody because it keeps you humble. So again, I go back to, yes, the Bible does talk about when you're fasting, not to be fasting before men looking all ashen and hungry. But surrender fast is just something a little different, that's all. Um, I have another question here um, from um, Cara says, shouldn't you be in agreement with your church leaders if you are calling, if they are calling for the church family to fast? Um, you should be in agreement with obedience if you are part of that ministry and you um, – uh, believe in the ministry that you're called to be a part of and all of that, you should just um, agree that if the church is fasting, that you're going to fast right along with them. Now, it might be something you might not have said you wouldn't necessarily do. You know, they say fast all day to 6 o'clock. First of all, you got to make sure you're healthy enough, and I know most churches say that, to do something like that. But then just present it before God and say, in obedience, God, I'm fasting with my church. Cara, tell me if that is answering your question. Well, Tanya says, is it okay to do a different fast than what your church is doing? Church is abstaining from a particular food for a certain amount of time, and then you want to do the damn fast or something else. Oh, man, Tanya, um, I typically do the fast that my church calls us to. That, that, that's, just, that's just me. I'm just a big fan of obedience. Um, but if you pray to God and God gives you the okay to do something else, you just have to know that's what God is telling you to do. If God says, Tanya, um, the church is doing this, but I need you to do this. I need you to do Daniel. I need you to do something then you do what God tells you to do. Absolutely. But God is a God of order and decency. So I tend to believe God's going to side with your pastor and you're going to do the fast your church is calling you to do. Um, Jessica says, yes. Yes, what, Jessica? You're agreeing? Or, oh, similar to the prior question, Jessica? I think that's what it is. Um, Kyra says, right, that, right, that is where I'm coming from. Wasn't sure how to say it. Okay, sounds good. And Tanya said, awesome, thanks. You're welcome, Tanya. Um, Tina puts here, when I did a surrender fast, initially I cringed at the notion of answering to my ministry sisters when I surrendered. It was humbling. Yes, it is, Tina. When you got to say, like, when I had to surrender all my sugar, I had to surrender hot tamales, 
and that's so embarrassing, but I was eating a box of hot tamales and I, yeah, it's humbling when you got to tell people that you have an addiction. <laughs> um, um, and Kara said you shouldn't be fasting to be obedient for obedience sakes. Yeah, you shouldn't do, um, it reminds me of the scripture, you shouldn't give out of necessity, grudgingly or necessity. You shouldn't give your fast in that way either. And if you feel like that's all you're doing, ask God to change your heart. Say, Lord, I want to fast in a way that's pleasing to you. I want to do this because I'm drawn closer to you. Help me to do this right. And God's going to honor that. He's going to bless you in it. So let's just review really quickly. Um, so if you're fasting for the new year, here's the review. First of all, you fast with the right heart motivation. Secondly, you choose the fast that is right for you. And if your church is calling to a fast, that is the fast that's right for you. And don't treat your fast as a religious formality. Um, if you have any other questions, you feel free to put them in. Um, surrender fast, I'm always promoting surrender fast. So if you want to do surrender fast, you can. And you can also save tonight, or well, actually for the next 48 hours, because I know people are going to be listening to the recording. So if you want to save a little money, you can. Um, the, each individual copy is $13.99, but if you want to buy them, a lot of ministries have started buying them by the case. So we have a case of books for $24, I mean, 24, case of 24 for $200. It costs you about $8.30. First of all, this is one of the best investments you can ever make because the surrender fast just, it advances you. That's what a lot of, uh, one of Pastor DeBoer, one of my friends says, surrender advances you, and it really does. And what the surrender fast does is put you in a posture of being able to hear from God Hear clearly what his plan is and move in that direction. I love surrendering to God each and every day. In fact, I've made surrender a lifestyle. But again, if you want to save on the book, you can save 10%. It'll save you your shipping at least um, or something like that. And you can do that. And then you would just use the coupon code Fasting Success. And how you get there to use that is you do www.shop.surrenderfast.com. Dot com. So again, you can go to shop.surrenderfast.com. It takes you to the Surrender Fast store, and you can purchase the books um, with 10% off if you use the coupon code Fasting Success. And the coupon code, they won't, the store won't ask you for the coupon code until you've put in all your information. Then at the end, it'll ask for your code. All righty, we have more questions. Okay, so, oh, let me see. Okay. Latoya says the surrender fast of first fast within those 40 days, people could tell how calm, relaxed, and worry-free I was. But when the fast was over, what happened? I was back to my old self. I know Toya, that's why, or Latoya, <laughs> that's why it's like, it's why, that's why surrender has to be a lifestyle. And one of the things that is important for you to know when you fast is, um, or surrender, this is specifically to the surrender fast. Some of the things that you surrender are idols. And when you surrender idols, you should never go back to it. When you go back to it, you become your old self. Um, one of the things I surrender to God, just in an act of obedience, is sugar. And I use very little sugar for the last uh, two years, over two years or so. I use very little sugar. I don't eat desserts. I don't eat, not that I wanted to. I can still look at cake and my mouth waters. It's so ridiculous. Just like that physiological reaction to, to cake, cookies, anything like that. But in obedience to God, because it's not good for me, um, I stopped doing it. So it's like you have to make surrender a lifestyle um, and keep the thing that you surrender. And then sometimes you, you don't keep them. Like um, sometimes you surrender to God just to prove it's not an idol. And then you can go back like, Terry, one of my friends, Terry, did the fast many times, and one of the things he surrendered was TV, but then he realized when he went back, he couldn't go back to TV the way he used to watch it. He, limit now, he limits now the time he watches TV, what particular programs he watches, things like that. So you have to use some um, discretion as well so that you can keep um, the benefits that you got. Like you said, Latoya, calm, relax, worry-free, all of that. Um, and then fast again with us. We're fasting again in March, so... Go to surrenderfast.com and sign up for Cycle 7 um, and join us again. Jessica says, I sometimes find it difficult to keep the fact that I'm fasting from others who may offer me food while I'm doing so. Any suggestions on how to respond without sounding prideful? Yeah, I know. People just like, here, have some. No, really, take it. No, I'm like, no, no. You know, sometimes you can get away with saying, no, no, thank you. And sometimes you just have to say, I'm fasting. But you know what? Just leave it at that. Don't go into going fasting all day or I'm so hungry right now. You know, no, just I'm fasting and moving on. 
and you know, God knows your heart. That's a wonderful thing. It's all about the heart, you all. If you don't hear anything else about this call tonight, it's about the heart. And God looks at the heart. So it's not about saying everything perfect, doing everything perfect. It's really about your heart towards God. So um, Lisa says, my church has a fast every January, but my husband and I start a week after due to our anniversary on December 31st. And my husband's birthday is January 2nd. Lisa, it's, you know what? If you and God are okay with you starting after the second, that's fine and well with me. Um, you know, and you and your husband agree that that's the way you're going to do it, and you do this wholehearted fast after the second. Wonderful. Now, there are times when God calls you to sacrifice even that. I remember last this year, this year, I had decided to fast. Um, and any of you have to drop off the call. Good night. Have a good night. I know we're past our 7:30, but I'm happy to stay on as long as we need to, to um, answer questions. But anyway, back to Lisa. This year, Lisa. I only gave myself permission, I vowed to God that I would only have dessert three times this year. And dessert meaning like cheesecake, cake, whatever it is, dessert. Mother's Day, my birthday, and Christmas, okay? When Mother's Day came around, God called me to that 21-day fast I'm telling you about. The Sunday, Mother's Day, I could not believe it. I was like, no, I want to have dessert. <laughs> but you know what? Sometimes it's just like you have to do that kind of sacrifice um, to get in closer with God and to really experience his outrageous um, blessings and all sorts of things. And he's just done the most incredible things in my life this year. Um, so it's, it's just it's just what I'm saying, Lisa, is not about the guilt or anything. It's about doing what God has called you to do. And, he, and if he says fast after the second, cool beans, if he pricks your heart this year and say, Lisa, start fasting on the 30th then just do what God says is worth it. Carla says, can you show the list of um, uh, fast types again? Oh, yeah, yeah, sure, Carla. Um, ooh, but if I close this out, Carla, I'm going to come back to that because if I close this out, I'm going to lose my question. So um, let me see. Um, Lisa says, is that wrong? Oh, Lisa, okay, we answered that. Um, Myrtle says, I agree. I did that with you. Um, okay, Myrtle. I forget what I was just talking about, but sorry, but Myrtle um, was mentioning that. Cara says, I would like to share your book and do this fast with my ministry group. How do I start the process to get their participation? Actually, Cara, that is a great question. If you email me, I'm going to email you a form. There's a form letter that our connector group leaders use. So I'm going to email you that form. So email me at info. I-N-F-O at DrCelesteOwens.com. And any, any of you have questions, you can email me, info at DrCelesteOwens.com. Um, and, and then any other general questions, you can send to Stephanie, my administrative assistant, and she's at admin, A-D-M-I-N, at SurrenderFast.com. Okay, so, and Cara, that's excellent. I think it will be awesome for your ministry group to do it this year. If you have 24 people at least, you guys can get a case and save a lot of money on the books. Carla says, one of the teachers said to me the other day, you are no longer doing the fast. I asked, how does she know? <laughs> she said that my quick temper was back and I wasn't as calm. Carla, I tell you, um, we're fasting. We're on our P's and Q's. We're with God. We're, you know, we're being our best Christian selves. And then when we're not fasting, you know what happens. If the flesh gets bigger than the spirit, then the flesh takes over and the flesh has a quick temper and the flesh is not calm and all that stuff. So even outside of fasting, if you want to decrease the flesh, get up every morning and surrender your heart, your mind, your body to God every morning. I, every morning I get up, Lord, take over my mouth, take over my mind. Let me be a vessel to be used by you today. And then if you find yourself off during the day, which we all can be, especially me in traffic, Carla, me in traffic, just pray for me. If you find yourself off, just, Lord, forgive me and keep going. Lord, use me this day. And that's the way God does it. I'm actually going to be doing a 30-day tongue fast, I think that's what it's called, with my good friend Carolyn Tatum and some other women uh, focus study leaders at the church. So, um because I want to have my tongue be right and really um, speak life all the time into my life and into other people's lives as well. Um, Tina says, when I did the surrender fast, I decided what I was surrender. But day one, the Lord said, yes, all those things are nice, but this is what I want. 
uh, ask God what to surrender, he will show you. He will. And actually, Tina, it's a great point because in the Surrender Fast book, there is a pre-fast. And if you do that pre-fast, God will speak to you and tell you what to give up. And sometimes you pick the wrong thing and then like he does, did to Tina, day one he says, uh-uh, Tina, that is not it. This is what you're fasting from. So thank you for your obedience, Tina. Um, Antoinette says, okay, I want, okay, if I want to fast to clear my spirit before I start college. Okay, congratulations, Antoinette. I don't know when you're starting college, but that's fantastic. I feel in my spirit that God wants me to and long with my husband. So do I pray to see what one we should do? Oh, yeah, absolutely. You should pray and see what fast God wants you to do. And that's fantastic. Your husband will fast with you, um, um, you know, to have that uh, position before God that we as a couple are fasting is um powerful. So I definitely agree that you should pray and ask God what you should fast, how you should fast. Coach Nick says, um, it is a lifestyle. Yes, it is. It impacted me so dearly. My surrender fast helped others at work. We fasted from sugar and reactive negativity. Um, I think that's what you're saying, Coach Nick. Yeah, Coach Nick does some fantastic work. You all on emotional detox. Love me some Coach Nick. So check her out. Um, Cara says, I missed the beginning of the discussion. Please send me the recording. Oh, absolutely, Cara. I would definitely send this, um, the recording after we're done. Um, oh, okay. Myrtle was mentioning the 40 day surrender fast. That's what she did with me. Yep, Myrtle, you sure did. Um, join me again, cycle seven. Um, Tanya says, sorry, got to share this. I agree. If God says it's okay, do it. My church started a fast, a cup, a fast of choice during the time that we were going on our honeymoon. We chose me. Okay because we knew we were going to have a wedding cake, etc. We were still doing seafood. Wouldn't you know it? Nothing but meat on the cruise ship. <laughs> no seafood. <laughs> oh, Taya. Five whole days. Horrible. Laugh out loud. I know, Taya. That is funny. But I guess our hearts weren't right because our focus was just on the food, right, that we couldn't eat. So, Celeste, thanks for the awesome insight. You're welcome, Taya. Um, Taya and I were roommates, you all, in the 90s. Love me some Taya. So, I'm glad you got that insight, Tanya. Uh, Myrtle says, I'm helping with the New Year's revival and have a quick, a few quick temper, and had a few quick temper um, with some people. With fast, which fast would you suggest? For quick temper? Oh, I don't know. How about the surrender fast? Uh, no, I'm just kidding. A little bit, Myrtle. I know you just got off the surrender fast, but I don't know, Myrtle. Email me, and I'm going to make some suggestions on some fasts. You could do, again, I'm doing a 30-day um, tongue fast. Um, Carolyn, do you know who that's by? I think Carolyn's still on the line. Um, I forget the lady's name, but I guess if you Google 30-day, you could do that and, and um, surrender your tongue for 30 days. Um, Myrtle said, yeah, maybe that's what I need. I know. That, that would be a great one. Um, no, it's not LaToya. The, oh, yeah, yeah, LaToya, yes. The Queen Esther Ministry is doing the tongue fast, 30-day tongue fast, and they're part of the First Baptist Church of Glen Arden, you all. It's the Queen Esther Ministry, um, and they're doing the tongue fast. So I'm just hanging with the Queen Esther Ministry. They've done a surrender fast for two years in a row. Um, so this year they're doing the tongue fast, so I'm just hanging out with the Queen Esther Ministry this year. Um, thank you, Keisha. Keisha said the book is called 30 Days to Tame Your Tongue. Thanks, Keisha. So Myrtle, if you want to hang out with us, 30 Days to Tame Your Tongue. Yafet says, hi, Celeste. Hey, Yafet, thank you for having this webinar. It's helped me to renew my mind and spirit regarding the fundamental purpose and joy in showing God our love through sacrificing our flesh through fasting. Okay, Yafet, I'm going to have to put that on um, Twitter, Facebook, something. That, that just sums it up perfectly. Um, Carolyn says, it's by Deborah Pequay. Pequay. Sorry, you all. Her last name is spelled P E. Q U E, P E Q U E, Deborah. That's a thirty-day tongue fast. Um. Oh, yeah. Keisha, Keisha put it in too. Deborah Smith per K P E G. Oh, is it P E G? Keisha. Keisha has here is P E G U E S. So, one of those names. Just Google thirty-day tongue fast. You're gonna find her. Carla says the fast has helped me begin to relax. I'm assuming she needs to surrender fast um, and introduce me to yoga. I'm excited about that. That is helping me and be calm. I do ask God to forgive me when I lose my temper. 
Amen, Carla, and God does forgive. Antoinette says, January 23rd, she started college. Yay. I go back to college. Can I get this webinar to share with my husband so that he will know how to fast? Absolutely, Antoinette. Right after this, well, at least by the morning, you'll have this webinar emailed to you. So you'll be able to replay it back for him. Oh, okay. Tanya said you spelled, Deborah is Pagis. Pagis. Okay. Deborah Pagis. Thanks, Taya. Uh, Ladidra. Hey, Ladidra. She said, I participated in the tongue fast about three years ago. The fast is definitely a challenge. My first challenge was a drive through window. I sat at the window for five minutes before I got out of the car and proceeded inside where I ordered by writing a note to the cashier. Wow. Okay. Awesome, Ladidra. Wow. And I would just think if you sat in the drive through for five minutes, you'd be so mad. You want to give somebody a piece of your mind. But you're on the tongue fast. Um, so, hey, CC, CC's on the call. She said, um, surrender fast was the very first fast I have ever tried. When I entered it, I was desperate and didn't know what else to do. My son's skin was so bad, he looked like a burn victim. By the end of the fast, he was healed. The doctors couldn't help my son, but God did. I'm forever grateful for how the surrender fast has blessed us. Amen, CC. We get so many testimonies about how people are delivered from so many things. Um, there have been people, one sister, she had been, she had had insomnia for about three years. And when she started to surrender fast, God instructed her to listen to the prayer. We do prayer every morning when we fast. Um, and we record the, those prayers. God instructed her to listen to them at night instead of in the morning. And she said the first night she listened to the prayer, she fell asleep. She couldn't believe it. She threw away all her Ambien and everything else that had been given to her. And she now sleeps through the night. No anxiety, no nothing. Um, there have been people who have been delivered from, at least three people who have emailed us to say that God delivered them from smoking. Um, so just so much deliverance when we surrender. Um, yes, Myrtle, the, that book, The 30 Day Tongue Fast, is in the First Baptist Church of Glen Arden bookstore. And actually, so is the surrender fast for anyone who doesn't order it um, with us tonight. It's on the... Um, is at the bookstore. Oh, wait a minute. Somebody wanted me to go back to the types of fast. I hope you're still on the line. Um, there's the partial fast. I'm going to go back, but I don't want to lose my questions in these boxes. But there's the absolute fast, where you fast from all food and don't drink. There's the partial fast, um, where you give up something. And then there's the normal fast, where you give up, um, the normal fast, where you, you do drink water, but you give up food. And then there's the surrender fast. But when I get a chance, I'll go right back to it. Um, Let's see. Yafet says, you have my permission. Oh, yeah, to put up on Facebook. Thanks, Yafet. You know I'm old school and I don't tweet Facebook or any of that. Don't forget to cite me. <laughs> definitely not. I will definitely cite you, Yafet. Uh, Sherelle says, when does a 30-day tongue fast start? Ooh, Carolyn, when, when are you guys? Oh, I know. They're starting right after the New Year's. So it's like that Wednesday. Whatever's the day after New Year, like January 2nd. That's when the 30-day tongue fast starts. Um, Coach Nick says, I oh, I always am so energized when I join one of your sessions. Thanks. I can't say enough about your ministry. And ladies, if you are in relationships, the Surrender Fast will put you in a place to receive what God has for you. I gave up premarital sex and what I feared to lose was small in comparison to how my relationships has has grown. Yeah, Coach Neek gave up her premarital sex and everything. It just went on a limb just to believe God could do something more. Um, and he did. He just opened up such a wonderful ministry for her. So just so I'm ecstatic for what God did for Coach Neek. Um, you're welcome, Antoinette. She said, thank you. Uh, Chrisanne, Chrisanne here is in the house. She says, amen to the comment you're putting on Facebook. I started the first surrender fast, and the second week my flesh took over, and I forgot to continue. <laughs> I'm certainly going to surrender my memory to allow space for God. I am in preparation and beginning um, the first fast Monday. Oh, wow. So she's surrendering. Um, Starting her first fast, surrender fast, sounds like on Monday. Um, Carolyn, just anyone doing the tongue fast, Carolyn said that they start that Wednesday, January 2nd. Um, so if you want to be a part of that, um, you can be. Uh, let's see what else we got. Uh, Naima, Naima, my sister, my sister-in-law, Naima. Uh, very often when praying for what I should fast, I feel that I am clouded by what I think I need to give up, and I start to wonder how I am hearing from God, or is this just what I want? How can I prevent this? Naima, I'm feeling you because you, along with me and all of us who are perfectionist-type people who want to just, 
if we're going to surrender, we're going to go all out and surrender 20 things. No, it doesn't work that way. It's just God just wants us to sacrifice and surrender something that he tells us to surrender. And it's usually just one thing. You know, we don't have to be overachievers. We don't have to overdo it. He just tells us one thing. And then I often tell people, if you start getting all confused, and, I don't know what to give up. I don't know what, whatever the first thing you were going to give up, give it up. God does so much more during that 40 days than you can ever imagine. He starts to speak from the pre-fast. So whatever you surrender, you just do it with all your heart, and God's going to do the rest. Um, Ladija said the tongue fast was successful, and I did realize that not only do words hurt, but body language hurts too. You're right about that. Um, good luck with those who are taking the challenge. Amen. Thanks, Ladija. Carla says the recording of the webinar is being shared. I will see it then. Thank you. Oh, yeah, that's right, Carla. Okay, sounds like a plan. Uh, Zanola, Zanola, hi, Zanola, says, will this surrender fast help me to clearly hear and receive clear guidance from God? Oh, my goodness. Without a doubt, Zanola, and, and people on here who have done it will tell you, it just, it just opens up your ear space and your heart space to really hear from God. There's been so many things sometimes that I feel confused about, and then when I just surrender to God and just give him those 40 days, he just really starts to reveal things clearly, like, um, you know, what my next steps are, where I should be going, what things I need to to um, so to get rid of. There have even been relationships. God says, sever those relationships because I need to move you forward in my plan. There's nothing wrong with those people. They just can't go where I'm going. I can't go where they're going. They're not, we're not a part of each other's destinies any longer. So, yes, you will get clear direction from God. Um, Lisa said, this is great. Thanks, Lisa. Thank you for thank you very much. I can't wait until March for cycle seven. Me too, Lisa. I'm looking forward to it. Zanola says, I really, really need to hear God's voice by fasting. Will I do so? Zanola, I can't guarantee you enough that you will hear from God. And I don't even have to guarantee you. It's in his word. He says that when you fast the way he um, wants you to fast. Oh, here it is. Here it is. I found it. Isaiah 58 and 9. Zanola, this is for you. It says, then you will call. This is when you fast, when he wants you to fast. Um, let's just start with verse 8. It says, then your light will break forth like the dawn and your healing will quickly appear. Then your righteousness will go before you and the glory of the Lord will be your rear guard. Verse 9, then you will call and the Lord will answer. You will cry for help and he will say, here I am, Zanola. Here I am. Yes, you will hear from God clearly and he will bless you. Um, Lisa uh Zanola says, wow, that's confirmation. Don't you love how God just shows up on a webinar and confirms things? Thank you. I'm looking forward to your session in March. Thank you. You're welcome, Zanola. Chris Ann says, laugh out loud. There is nothing like the 40-day surrender fast. God shows up, shows out, and will show you you. Yes, he will. What a miraculous change. Guaranteed because God is guaranteed. Ooh, that's good, Chris Ann. What a miraculous change. Guaranteed because God is guaranteed. Yes, he is. Tanya says, is 40 days standard for the surrender fast or can you choose um, a different time frame? You know what, Tanya? God just gave it to me as 40. 40 is God's number in the Bible. You see, it's always a time of probation or a time of transition when God does 40. He did 40 with Noah, uh, rain 40 days and 40 nights. Um, Jesus fasted in the wilderness 40 days. Um, so that's just the number God gave me. But there was one, um, Sylvia, my friend Sylvia, actually did the surrender fast in the prison uh, with the prison um, ministry leaders, and they did an eight-day. They just surrendered for eight days, and they had fantastic uh, results. They grew closer to God, and God just did a miraculous work, and they were doing like a um, conference there. So, you know what? Um, you surrender for the amount of days God tells you to, but if you do the book, the book is um, set up in a 40-day format, so... It's up to you. Italian, if you've never done it, you need to join us in March. I would love to have you along. Antoinette says, this is good because, oops, so many questions are coming, I'm losing it. Um, oh, Antoinette said, this is good because I was unknowable of how to properly fast. Yeah, thank you for this because God is reigning in your life since this summer. Yes, it, that's the truth. Thank you, Antoinette. Um, Tanya says, okay, okay, Tanya, you're going to do surrender with us in March? That's what it sounds like. Um, Tanya, I'm buying this book as soon as the webinar is over. As a member of First Baptist Church, this is a different Tanya, this is Tanya Johnson. As a member of First Baptist Church of Glenar, I've been fasting for the past three years. I've had breakthroughs. This is a year of double portion. Yes, it is. Moving forward with a double portion has been our um, theme this year, and I pass it on to any of you who are on this call. Move forward out of 2013 with a double portion. 
Um, so I'm ready, Dr. Celeste, to surrender 1114 for immeasurable breakthroughs and blessings. Thank you. You are welcome, Tanya. Um, and Tanya Hollingsworth, that's the other Tanya, my Tanya uh, ex-roommate says she knows. So awesome. So if you all, looks like I've gotten through the questions. This is fantastic. So if you all want to order the Surrender Fast, you can do so. Get 10% off for the next couple of days. Hang out with us. Either do it in the first of the year like um, Tanya the other tie is doing, or or Chrisanne, Chrisanne starting up again, or you can wait and do it with us in March, but at least get your book now so you're not scrambling before you know it, March will be here, so you don't scramble to get your book later. Any final thoughts? If not, we're going to close out this session. Uh, we got a final thought here. Let's see. Um, Oh, Myrtle says, thank you so much for this webinar. Myrtle, you are so welcome. You are such a sweetheart. I actually saw you on the webcam um, for First Baptist um, at the 10 o'clock service. So thanks, Myrtle. Uh, Ladija says, thank you for this informative webinar. You're welcome. The four types of fast I will allow, the, uh, the four types of fast will allow me to choose the correct fast. That's right, Ladija, for the upcoming week. Also, I'm looking forward to the Serena Fast in March. Yay. Uh, Elaine, hi Elaine, says thanks so much. This has been so helpful. That's wonderful, Elaine. I'm so glad you joined us. Um, and all of you have joined me tonight. Thank you, thank you, thank you. This has been a lot of fun. I might, um, I'll, I'll have other webinars, so it's definitely um, stay connected. And if you haven't already, like this 40 Day Surrender Fast on Facebook or like Dr. Celeste Owens on Facebook. If you if you do the Facebook thing, if you do Twitter, I'm at Dr. Celeste Owens. Um, LaDonna uh, Keisha says, great info. Thanks, Keisha. And she's going to join us in March. Yay, Keisha. Keisha's new to fasting, so I'm looking forward to hearing how God moves in her life during that time. LaDonna says, I missed it and would like to get the recording. LaDonna, I'm going to send it out. It will be to you by tomorrow morning. It will be emailed to you. Um, Robin says, thank you so much. I'm looking forward to doing the Surrender Fast this upcoming year. Yay, Robin. I think Robin's done it before. Um, so I look forward to having you along. Sherelle says, yes. Thanks again. I look forward to doing the 40-Day Surrender Fast for the second time during Cycle 7. Yay! I look forward to doing it as well with all of you. I just praise God for you. Um, um, Christian, I missed the beginning. Can I listen to the listen on the phone? Christian actually is going to be emailed to you, so you'll, you'll have to listen through your computer. Hopefully that's not an issue. Um, Deidre says, hey, Deidre, she says, I will definitely be on Cycle 7. This was an awesome webinar. I needed this refresher. Thanks. That That is Deidre, you all, from Deidre True Heart Speaks. Check her out on Facebook. Love me some Deidre. Um, she's been fasting with us probably at least three or four of them. Tammy says, thank you so much, and I'm looking forward to doing the Surrender Fast. I'm excited. Yay, Tammy. I'm looking forward to you doing it with us as well. Great things are coming your way, Tammy. Um, hey, oh, thanks, Deidre. You're welcome. All righty, you all. So I guess we will close in prayer as I read Chris Ann's comment. <laughs> Thanks. That's fine. Thank you. I needed this refresher as well. Um, I love this ministry. Thanks, Chris Ann. You know what? Truthfully, it helped me to do this refresher because the flesh just wants to do what the flesh wants to do, right? It wants to fast the way it wants to fast, and it doesn't want us to get breakthroughs. So, um, and Antoinette says, so how do I do go about doing the six cycle? You know what? Let me say this before I hang up on you. I mean, you know, release the call. You actually can go back and do previous cycles. Um, in the previous cycles are actually, the cycle six is, actually has a PDF that you can download for uh, five bucks. Um, and it's actually the, um, it's the, the morning prayer call put into book format. And it actually has probing questions and things you could do. You could do it while you're fasting or you could just do it as a devotional without fasting. And that cycle was filled to the full. The keys for living a powerful, favorable, graceful, and favorable life. And we just finished that cycle in September. You can listen to recordings for free, and you can download the um, journal. And it's right there on shop.surrenderfast.com. And you can do that. You can do that um, particular um, morning prayer calls as a part of your 40-day devotional of fasting, or or without. Either way, but there's information on the site about that. Um, um, Antoinette says. Antoinette says that is other. Okay. Um, Tiffany. Hi, Tiffany. Says bless you. Thank you so much, Tiffany. Um, and I think I've answered all of the questions. I can't believe most of you stayed on the line. That's fantastic. Thank you for your participation tonight. Uh, love you all. Thank you so much for being a part of um, this experience. Whatever fast you decide to do for the year, I really pray God's blessings on you that you do just what he's calling you to do. Let us close in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I just thank you, God, for this time and these moments that you have given us 
to be with you tonight, oh God. I thank you, God, that you have spoken to us. You have been with us, O oh Lord. And like you told Zanola tonight, O oh God, that when we fast the way you're calling us to do it, that we will call out to you and you will say, yes, here I am. Lord, we just thank you for being our friend. Thank you for being there with us, O oh God, and thank you for directing our lives, O oh God. I know greater is coming for each and every person who has been a part of this call, O oh God. Let them feel that in their hearts and know that, O oh God, with all of their heart, that greater is coming, O oh God. They're moving forward with a double portion, O oh God, and you have more in store for them than they can ever think or imagine. So I just thank you, God, for that. We love you. We bless you. There is none like you in all the earth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good night, everyone. Have a wonderful evening.